Landsat, so essentially no thrusters on the station uh, are able to fire right now. Um, so attitude fully in control of the first set of hooks open and nominal, second set of hooks traveling. All right, first set open, second set opening. We are now committed to an undock. So uh, this next set of six are gonna open. We should have them open within the next two minutes and then we'll get physical separation and we'll call you an undocking time. And we're seeing nominal performance so far on the second set of hooks. Standing by should be within about a minute or so until this second set opens. That'll be all 12 opened and there will be no physical mechanism still in place holding Dragon to the international docking adapter. We're looking at it attached to the forward port on the station to that uh, docking adapter. As soon as this next set opens within the next minute, Dragon's gonna fire a real quick burst again about a second and a half to start backing away and that'll be our physical separation and that'll be our time of undocking after that initial undocking burn we'll do another one lasting about five seconds to keep backing away and then we'll do a couple of departure burns to eventually bring dragon uh, out over top of the station around and then underneath but for now we are all eyes on those on that last set of hooks holding Dragon in place where it's been for more than 150 days attached to this forward port on the space station. Standing by for physical separation. All hooks open. All hooks open. Depart burn one has fired Dragon Endurance undocked 262 statute miles over and the Coral Dragon Sea. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop separation confirmed. Dragon copies, we see it. To a successful separation again dragon undocking at 1 20 a.m central time 2 20 a.m eastern time with dragon the station flying 262 statute miles over the coral sea off the northeastern coast of australia so with that dragon now stepping into depart burn depart zero burns. nominal dragon copy All right, so undock burns completed, that depart burn zero completed. Next one coming up in just a couple of minutes, but with Dragon now flying free, I'm gonna toss it back over to Shiva and Leah at MCCX and Hawthorne to take us through the rest of the flight. Thanks a bunch, Dan. So we had some great shots there of the first depart burn. Uh, we're coming up on depart burn. So that was the depart burn zero, and now we're coming up on depart burn number one. Now this will be a short firing of the Dragon's Draco thrusters. The burn just lasting about 16 seconds. You can see that Dragon has begun to fly away from the space station and these initial depart burns essentially increase the range rate from the station so we can get away from the International Space Station and get out of uh, these various different spheres of control uh, around the vehicle that keep both of the vehicles safe. So we uh, heard a call for successful depart burn zero, that 16 second burn. That increases the speed at which Dragon is flying away from the station. It's gonna start to send it up and over the space station. It'll eventually come uh, down and then behind the space station. Uh, this depart burn zero puts crew Dragon Endurance and Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna on their journey home. 
So there's a good look at where Depart Burn Zero takes us. We'll also be standing by for Depart Burn One. That's another short burn, about 21 seconds. Uh, that's going to keep us on that trajectory to go over uh, and then eventually down and behind the International Space Station. Depart Burn One is also going to be what's going to send us out of the keep out sphere. Uh, that is an invisible sphere around the International Space Station. It's a boundary, uh, 200 meters in radius and it helps us determine or helps us um, govern visiting spacecraft arriving or departing the space station. So before moving into that keep out sphere, you have to, ha your spacecraft must be configured so that uh, it would not cross that boundary for at least four orbits, even if for some reason it lost all maneuvering. So we, we monitor that before and after departure. Uh, Crew Dragon continuing to make its way further from the space station. We're continuing to get some really cool views from uh, the International Space Station cameras. So this one's got Dragon, and it looks like one of the robotic arms um, in, in the foreground, Dragon in the background. And uh, of course, the, the opportunity today was a little bit delayed from the initial timing. Um, but as a result, it turned out that we had better communications coverage so we could actually get some of these views from the space station. Now, Leah, I really like your explanation of the, the keypad sphere. I, I kind of analogize it to if you've ever flown uh, into a major airport, there's an air traffic control team who's governing who can come into the airport, what timing they should go do that. And the keypad sphere is, is one of those imaginary constructs that allows the flight control teams uh, of the visiting vehicles as well as the, the flight control team in Johnson to make sure that everyone is safe and no one is inadvertently entering to a place that is habited by people. Yeah, and we have a couple of those boundaries. The keep out sphere is the one closer to the space station and the other is the approach ellipsoid. That one is a um, four kilometer by two kilometer, again, an ellipsoid, it's more, uh, it's not as much of a sphere. Um, and it is also an imaginary shape, but it also helps us monitor those arrivals and departures of any and all visiting spacecraft. Um, station on the big loop. Station. Duke and crew five, magnificent sunset departure. You guys look great. Great job up here. We're going to miss you. Godspeed. Awesome. Thank you, Frank, and the rest of the crew. We'll be following along. Some kind words exchanged between the crew members. Uh, the uh, they were talking about the big loop, so there, that is the way that we refer to the combined communications between Mission Control and Johnson, the International Space Station, visiting vehicle, so Dragon, and then, uh, of course, controllers here in Hawthorne. Yeah, and we were talking about uh, the approach ellipsoid. So what we're in right now, where we're talking on that big loop, this is joint operations. Both mission control teams working together with Crew Dragon, with the space or with the space station, um, and we are actually coming right up on Depart Burn One. So that's what's going to take us up and over the station. Um, but yes, it, it must be a little. Oh, and confirmation that Depart Burn One has started again. This is about a 21 second burn uh, using those service section Draco thrusters. And every once in a while, uh, the thank you, thank you to the ground station uh, or the ground operators on the, the Johnson side. They give us some higher... Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, depart burn one nominal, and we see Dragon on a nominal trajectory away from station. At this time, you are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012. And finally, I have a reminder that the big loop will be deactivated following Dragon's exit from the approach ellipsoid. And copies and to the teams at NASA and SpaceX, thank you for an incredible expedition that has done your tireless efforts and attention to detail that have helped make this mission successful. I can't tell you how great it feels to be part of such an incredible team. And to the crew on board the International Space Station, you've got it. Make us proud. We'll be following along your mission. And to our friends and family, thank you for following along and being a part of our mission. It has been a privilege to add to the legacy. Semper Fidelis. It is absolutely overwhelming to back away from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we've called home for almost half a year. Station. Uh, 
Station copies All through. Safe flight. flight. Are incredibly proud. So a few it's things. It would be overwhelming to be back in the way from the International Space Station and gain some perspective on the place we called home for almost half a year. All of us on Crew 5 are incredibly proud of the work we've accomplished while we were there and to everyone who had a role in Expedition 68, whether direct or indirect, you should feel the exact same way. We thank you and we're excited to get back to that beautiful planet of ours and those wonderful people who live on it. Thank you. That was a beautiful view of the space station as we to all the uh, mission control centers all over the world. Thank you very much for your support. It's a privilege and a pleasure to work with all of you at the mission control centers. And uh, it's mission to see a crew, Sergey, Dmitry, Frank, Steve, Woody, Beltran, and Andre, Bon Voyage, and I will be following along. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimashita. Kasiba Bajo. Thank you very much for everyone, for everybody, for the nice and nice view. I really felt the fact that it's a to fail them and people learn down and I forgot the ball in my life. It's really cool. Thank you very much for everybody. Some words from all all four Crew 5 members uh, giving a final farewell to the International Space Station as... And Dragon Houston on the big loop. Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. We wish you safe travels and looking forward to seeing you back on Earth. Dragon copy. Houston. So we just heard from the Capcom, the capsule communicator uh, in Houston that Crew Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. That was the imaginary boundary we were talking about just moments ago, 200 meters in radius around the station. One of those safety zones while we are in uh, joint operations that help us uh, monitor any spacecraft arriving or departing. <laughs>